Today on Beamer Therapy. My name is Dr. Joshua Burka. No, I'm not a veterinarian. I am a consultant for Beamer North America. I'm a human uh, physician. Um, as a doctor of human care, I've been deploying Beamer Therapy uh, in my clinical practice for over 15 years. And I've had the pleasure of supporting Beamer in research and development, um, not just for the Beamer Human Unit, but also for their Beamer Equine, Beamer Vet Unit. And today we're going to review some of the most recent research that has been conducted on Beamer Therapy and the innovative Beamer Horse Set. So many of you maybe heard of Beamer Therapy, maybe you haven't. Either way, Beamer is a global market leader or a targeted therapy that impacts microcirculation. Beamer's been developing uh, patented treatment methods for physical vascular therapy since 1998, over 20 years. So Beamer's been in this business for a long time. And the research in the field is continuous. Functional microcirculation is the hallmark of maintaining health and ensuring optimal performance and recovery. Beamer devices improve blood flow, blood flow regulation in all areas within these smallest vessels, the microcirculation. So when we impact vessels, or to be more specific, the microvessels, it impacts microhemodynamics. And when we look at this, where blood flow energy goes, we know this. As a doctor, I can say this is fairly safe to say, optimal blood flow is the horsepower for our health. It directly impacts mitochondrial bioenergetics um, in addition to the microcirculatory aspects. Blood's bringing oxygen, nutrients into the target tissues, cells, tissues, organ systems, and taking away carbon dioxide, metabolic waste products. And Beamer Therapy emits this patented pulse electromagnetic field through its unique coil design. And I want to note here, you know, there's a lot of PMF products. Don't confuse yourself with the term pulsed electromagnetic field. All PMF devices and signals and um, aspects are not the same. There's multiple parameters. Beamer's the only PEMF on this planet that targets the microvessels, period. Um, it has a unique effect because the signal is patented and it's biorhythmically defined to target these precapillary arterioles to support performance and recovery for the equine patients. And when I look at the microcirculation research in the field of equine, there's not a lot of it. However, Beamer's been conducting seminal research in the field of microcirculation for many, many years and how our technology affects anatomy, physiology, as well as horse's behavior, um, and really working on developing innovative, useful therapeutics that are easy to use and are also form-fitting for horses. So here's what we're looking at as an intravital microscopy image above me. Uh, on the left, you can see blood flow that was documented with intravital microscopy after a short training session. And on the right side, you can see after five minutes of Beamer application. How does improved microcirculatory blood flow affect a horse's overall health? And as a targeted vascular therapy, Beamer increases microcirculation and targets vasomotion or vasomotor function, a very important aspect of what this therapy does. Uh, vasomotion is the physiological process, which is vital to maintaining vascular tone, functional hemodynamics, as well as autoregulation. Beamer's frequency modulated stimulation supports autonomic regulation, uh, relaxed state and behavior, suppleness as well, uh, supportive measure in general anesthesia, as you'll hear today as well in surgical practice, improved consistency of semen, quality for breeders, increased physical stability, and a non-drug approach to back pain. So over the next 25, 30 minutes or so, these doctors are gonna be talking about their research findings, the most recent research finding, and I invite you to look at these or view these results through the lens of microcirculation. And how blood flows, where it goes, how it's regulated, this has a unique impact uh, that Beamer has on the circulatory system. Beamer therapy provides a safe and effective therapeutic intervention to optimize both form and function for your equine patients. With that, I would like to um, bring up a very special doctor, Dr. Josef Gen. He's been a professional equine veterinarian since 1980 in Germany, focuses on orthopedics, surgery, sports medicine, uh, purchase examination, and gynecology. Since 1983, he's been involved in gynecological service for large um, stud farms in the region of Oldenburg breeding. He also has been responsible for the constitution of most of the artificial insemination stations in northern Germany. Dr. Gen is an official FEI veterinarian, 
during the last 20 years, he served as a team veterinarian on the athlete's primary, um, private veterinarian at Europe World Championships, as well as Olympic Games, Atlanta, Sydney, and London. Folks, please do welcome Dr. Josef Gen. The use of the pulsed electromagnetic field in humans and animals has been known about for a long time. However, there are different opinions on the efficiency of this therapeutic modality. The application of the behemoth offset was investigated with horses in training, in surgical patients in preparation for anesthesia, and with stallions and in European licensed stallion station. The so horses in training, the therapy blanket was applied to the horses uh, for a period of at least 10 minutes, program two, and no longer than 15 minutes, both before riding and for regeneration after working. Also influence on the muscle relaxation of the horse, as well as the horse's looseness, the general condition in training. The riders rated the horse's suppleness better at the end of the trial period than at the beginning, indicating a large influence of the training effect in combination with the Bema therapy. The horses that first received the Verum treatment showed a more balanced behavior over the whole trial period than the horses that first received the placebo treatment. No horse showed explicit discomfort during the therapy. Some jabjacks showed significant relaxation behavior. After level three, program three application, 15 minutes, some horses were observed to be overly relaxed. The horses yawned and urinated significantly more often in the wear room phase than in the placebo treatment. The focus and aim of the study was to determine whether BEMA application had an effect on influencing the anxious behavior of the horses. It was observed by our veterinary assistant that the horse's behavior positively influenced after only one week. Each horse was only exposed to BEMA therapy two times, night before and the morning before surgery. We tested, we made two groups with uh, divided by an experimenter external, though the technician didn't know exactly which blanket was the verum or the placebo. From the result of the study, it can be concluded that the use of BEMA therapy, physical vascular therapy in a veterinary practice and clinic in terms of horse behavior and handling is not only safe, but the horses are also positively influenced in their behavior. The test horses with the wear blanket behave significantly less frightened during the preparation for the operation and during the post-operative phase when attempting to stand. It was also observed that the horses that received active BEMA therapy needed a little bit more time to get up. In operations with the duration longer than a certain period, mostly more than one hour, horses with a wear blanket showed a smaller increase in their CQ level. The longer the horse was laying down, the higher the, the higher CQ levels, for sure. However, in horses that were treated with BEMA, the elevation of the CQ was not as high as the placebo group. So for me, this observation is a clear sign of improved microcirculation, which has led us to want to pursue a larger study. Dr. Kerner, my colleague, will follow soon. From the results, all horses accepted the application of the blanket without problems and relaxed significantly. It was possible to unambiguously determine that horses that started out stiff could begin work faster. Horses that were agitating at the beginning became more relaxed, and horses also became less anxious when being prepared for surgical operations. Impressed by the experiences made with the BMR therapy blanket, it was considered whether an individual harmonization of the sexual behavior of stud stallions would be possible. Overactive stallions are calmed down, or inactive stallions are could be stimulated. Also, increase of safety during mating for people and stallions 
and increasing the success of semen collection and achieving a more uniform semen quality in stud stallions. All the stallions showed a very good acceptance of the Bema therapy blanket. A contraindication could not be found in any of the stallions. Within a few weeks, an individual behavioral pattern emerged under the application so that subsequently, with the appropriate program, the daily application was maintained during the breeding season. Through the individual application of the Bema blanket, a harmonization in the behavior of the stallions in mating could be achieved. Stallions with a weak or insufficient libido responded very well to the use of level one. This was very exciting and uh, surprisingly. Uh, within a few weeks, and if the libido was poor, then we used level one twice in a row. Stallions with an overactive temperament were able to collect semen already mostly at the first attempts, otherwise at the second attempt at the latest. The stallions with relatively uniform behavior and good libido had consistently good semen quality and quantity and motility. Despite the extra time expenditure, even after the end of the user observation, the use of the Bema therapy was continued during the entire breeding process. So the studies and the positive experience with the Bema horses offer a very good possibility to influence the sexual behavior of the stallions, increasing the safety for humans and animals when handling with the stallions, to achieve a more uniform semen quality, and improvement of the well-being of the horse through the application. Thank you for your attention. So our next speaker here is Dr. Jens Körner. He's worked as a clinician and medical research since 2003. He's a diplomat at the American College of Veterinary Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation, also a specialist for horse orthopedics, and the manager of a special clinic in northern Germany where they study uh, that he's going to be talking about was conducted. Dr. Jens Körner has led the hospital uh, together with Dr. Stefan, or Stefan Leiser and Dr. Olivier Brandenberger. As a senior veterinarian, Dr. Korner is responsible mainly for orthopedics. Please welcome Dr. Jens Korner. Thank you for the introduction. So, uh, we are located uh, in the center of the three breeding areas, Hanover, Holstein, and Oldenburg, serving clients throughout Germany, um, Europe, and worldwide. We are specialized in eye surgery and standing upper airway procedures, provided contract surgery for many equine hospitals in Germany and surrounding countries. Um, we tested the Beamer horse set for uh, measurable effects during a standardized surgical procedure of approximately one hour. Um, here the surgical replacement of the vitreous body with gentamicin spiked balanced salt solution for treatment of ERU cases. Um, Beamer ther therapy uh, blankets were applied to 100 horses during general anesthesia in a double-blinded approach. Um, we do routinely about 1,000 of these procedures per year. Um, one special need for this procedure is a very deep general anesthesia off-site of regular approaches due to the necessity of um, total eye movement elimination. The question was, is there a measurable effect during and after general anesthesia in a live surgical procedure? Uh, so, since microcirculation is an important feature during general anesthesia, um, we wanted to see if we can affect the uh, microcirculation in these horses under these circumstances. The 100 patients were divided into two identical groups. The first group um, with a functional BEMA unit the second group was a non-functional Beamer unit, and um, the units were activated for 15 minutes at the first cut. The surgical team did not get the chance to find out which blanket would function or not. Uh, the patients were, were diced into, two, uh, into one of the other of the groups until one group reached a total of 50. 
and we, we measured arterial pressure, blood gas, lactate, and CK, and finally compared the groups using a paired t-test. Uh, recovery was scored according to uh, Donaldson and al. Uh, primarily used for uh, to compare halotane and isoflurane recovery. The lowest score was 10 for good recovery compared to the highest score of uh, 72 for a very bad recovery. Blood pressure and lactate appeared to be lower in the Beamer group, but without statistical significance. CK and blood gas were alike, so they stood the same for both groups. The major difference was found in recovery. Here the Beamer treatment group has reached significant higher scores. The p-value was uh, 0.00749 in this case. Finally, we were able to show a significant difference in recovery of horses between the functional and non-functional treated groups. Uh, we, we accounted that to a way more efficient uh, drug delivery to the tissues and a deeper plane of anesthesia. It was not possible to show, to show a significant difference in blood volumes in our 15-minute approach during a one-hour surgical procedure. Maybe the application or anesthesia time was too short to reach more significant blood values. Nonetheless, we were able to show a significant effect of Beamer horse therapy on general anesthesia. Um, there are the most relevant re uh, references for our study. Uh, thank you for your attention. Next uh, and the final presenter today is Dr. Melissa King. Dr. King is board certified equine sports medicine and rehabilitation specialist at Colorado State University, CSU. Uh, veterinary teaching hospital. She graduated from CSU uh, of College of Veterinary Medicine in 1997, completed her uh, internship at Rudin Riddle Equine Hospital down in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, com upon completion of her internship, Dr. King returned to private practice in Northern Colorado and began her career as an equine sports medicine clinician. She returned to her alma mater back in 08, 2008, to pursue a PhD assessing the efficiency of underwater treadmill exercise to diminish the progression of carpal osteoarthritis. Dr. King's current research interests involve the objective assessment of various rehabilitation modalities and therapeutic exercises for management of equine musculoskeletal injuries, as well as biochemical assessment of compensatory gait adaption, adaptions. She's currently an associate professional for equine sports medicine and rehabilitation at Colorado State University. Please do welcome Dr. Melissa King. Uh, thank you, Dr. Burka, for the introduction. So I'm, I'm really excited today to present to you the study that we did at CSU, where we looked at the effects of the Beamer blanket on horses that had thoracolumbar apaxial muscle pain. Certainly, I think everyone in this room can appreciate that horses with back pain are very challenging to treat, and it often requires a, a multimodal approach. And, and it's, it's a common problem in all of our equine disciplines. So we learned earlier from Dr. Burka that there is a large number of benefits associated with Beamer therapy in people, one of those being pain modulation. And, and that's what um, was the emphasis behind this study. We wanted to look at um, the objective was to assess analgesic responses and biomechanical outcome variables and to evaluate serum biomarkers as a method to monitor the treatment effect of the Beamer therapy blanket in horses with naturally occurring thoracolumbar apaxial muscle pain. So we enrolled eight horses that were four to 10 years of age. To enroll, they had to be in consistent work four to five days a week for 20 minutes at a minimum at walk, trot, and canter. All the horses came from a single riding center and after a very thorough musculoskeletal exam in which we diagnosed thoracolumbar apaxial muscle pain and then confirmed that using pressure algometry, they were enrolled in the study. Everything on this timeline in green is when we collected data. So we collected baseline data on day zero prior to blanket application. And then on days one through three, the blanket was applied in both AM and PM sessions, six hours apart, in which more data was collected. And then on day four, the end of study, we collected our end data for 24 hours after blanket application. So we're gonna jump right into some results. 
And if we look at our spinal evaluation results, which was conducted by a single examiner, and she was boarded in sports medicine and a certified equine chiropractor, she did a very thorough axial skeleton exam in which she assessed horses for pain and inflammation, for muscle tone and development, for spinal flexibility and areas of regional stiffness. And she graded those zero to three, zero being absent, three being marked change. And what she found at the end of the study was that there was significant improvements in muscle tone and improvements in apaxial and middle gluteal muscle pain on palpation in relationship to the therapy at the end of study. If we look at more objective ways for pain assessment, we use the pressure algometer to measure mechanical nociceptive thresholds at numerous sites along the thoracolumbar apaxial muscles. And we did this on days one through three immediately before blanket application and then immediately after blanket application in both the AM and PM sessions. And what we found immediately after blanket application was a significant increase in the mechanical nociceptive thresholds, so an acute pain modulation effect. Then we went on to say, okay, well, we certainly have statistical evidence that we're able to modulate pain acutely. How does this look at when we look at day four, so 24 hours after blanket application? And again, we saw a sustained effect of pain modulation, so higher mechanical nociceptive thresholds were again appreciated on day four in comparison to baseline. Now we looked at a whole host of different biomechanical variables from ground reaction forces by horses trotted across the force plate to kinematics and spinal flexibility and then we looked at postural sway. And postural sway is kind of a fancy way of measuring your ability to remain balanced. So while you stand stationary on a force plate, there are slight adjustments in your muscle tension that keep your center of mass within your base of support. And I, I can measure that. I can measure that in you. I can measure that in a horse. And so if you look at the, the upper graph right here, this is a stableogram of a human in a single leg stance position. And then this is the stableogram of a horse. And so when you're standing on the force plate, so we measured postural sway on horses during active treatment. So they were standing on the force plate during beamer treatment and we measured their sway pattern and so you can certainly appreciate in the upper graphs that baseline to day three we have a significantly smaller stablegram or a smaller area that they swayed within indicating improved neuromotor control and improved postural stability. Now when we look at spinal flexibility, we looked at kinematics in a, in a whole host of different dynamic mobilization tasks. And in particular, the one on the screen here is we asked the horses to reach their chin to their fetlocks while we measured the height differences in the markers here that are placed along the thoracolumbar region. And we measured the height difference in comparison to T6. So this is a little quick video, is it playing? Okay, so we asked the horses to reach to the fetlocks and then we measured that difference. When we look for, there we go. So hopefully you all can appreciate just with your eye the change in um, the height differences in comparison to T6. And then when we look at those values objectively, we can see that by comparison to day zero and day four, we see significant improvements in thoracolumbar lifting and spinal flexibility. This was further supported when we measured the angle of the thoracolumbar spine, so the curvature, and by day four, again, we see improved thoracolumbar lifting, improved spinal flexibility. We also measured lateral bending, and so in lateral bending, we measured the arc of the spine, but we also measured the distance between the marker placed on the uh, bridge of the nose to a marker placed on the tuber cocci, and we measured that distance while the horses were achieving a lateral bending task. And what we saw in relationship to immediately after blanket application was a significant improvement in their thoracolumbar lateral bending, so they were able to reach closer to that tuber cocci marker. So the outcomes of this study demonstrated that Beamer blanket therapy significantly improves our static balance control, it enhances our spinal flexibility, and it modulates pain in horses, which, which I think is fundamental to providing some foundational evidence-based support for bioelectromagnetic energy regulation therapy for the management of thoracolumbar apaxial muscle pain. 
So the use of Beamer therapy as, uh, will be an emerging technology or is an emerging technology which will represent a medication-free biosolution to modulating pain, increasing spinal flexibility, and improving balance control.